Another grim milestone reached by this coronavirus pandemic. The latest figures show 180,000 people have now died from COVID-19. As the numbers go up, the head of the World Health Organization is warning that this global pandemic will not be over soon. The Director General also warns of a resurgence of the outbreak in some countries. Here he is. Most countries are still in the early stages of their epidemics. And some that were affected early in the pandemic are now starting to see a resurgence in cases. Make no mistake, we have a long way to go. This virus will be with us for a long time. Well, let's have a look at the situation globally. We'll start with the U.S., where the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has renewed his attacks on Beijing, accusing it of a cover-up in the early stages of the pandemic. Here's what he said. China didn't share all of the information it had. Instead, it covered up how dangerous the disease is. It didn't report sustained human-to-human -human transmission for a month until it was in every province inside of China. It censored those who tried to warn the world. It ordered a halt to testing of new samples, and it destroyed existing samples. The CCP still has not shared the virus sample from inside of China with the outside world, making it impossible to track the disease's evolution. So strong words there against the Chinese Communist Party. Well, hours earlier, China fired back at a previous U.S. allegation which blamed Beijing for the pandemic, calling the accusations groundless. And in a further development on Tuesday, Missouri became the first U.S. state to sue the Chinese government over its coronavirus handling, saying that China's response to this outbreak had been devastating for economic losses. And the lawsuit also accuses the Chinese government of making the pandemic worse by hoarding masks and other personal protective equipment. Well, China has denounced the lawsuit as being frivolous. Our correspondent Barbara Platasha has more on Mike Pompeo's comments from Washington. He really went after China. He said that China had not uh, given information in a timely manner, uh, especially that the virus could be transferred from human to human. He said that the, the Chinese had not provided a sample of the virus. He even suggested that their laboratories might not be safe, although when he was pressed about that, he didn't give any detail. Now, critics have said that the administration probably has a case when it comes to issues like a, a Chinese disinformation uh, or a cover-up, but they also say that for the administration to go after China so hard at this point looks as if it's trying to blame China for the mistakes that the Trump administration itself made in responding to the pandemic. Well, thanks to Barbara Plett Usher there. Now, we're also hearing from a top U.S. health official who had a stark warning about a second wave of infections. In an interview with The Washington Post, the CDC chief, Robert Redfield, said that there is a possibility that the assault of the virus on our nation next winter will actually be even more difficult than the one we just went through. He adds that we're going to have the flu epidemic and the coronavirus epidemic at the same time which will put unimaginable strain on the healthcare system. Now, he added that protests, which are calling for states to be so-called liberated from lockdown orders, which the president himself appeared to have encouraged on Twitter, are, in his words, not helpful. Now, the US has the most coronavirus cases and deaths than any other country by far. In the past 24 hours, the number of deaths passed 45,000. There are now more than 830,000 cases across the state. Despite those figures, however, there are several southern U.S. states which are pushing ahead to ease lockdown restrictions. In Georgia, the residents there can visit gyms, hairdressers, tattoo parlors and bowling alleys from Friday. Movie theaters, restaurants will then follow on Monday. Let's turn to South Carolina, which has rescinded a ban on people going to the beach and also to retail outlets will be able to open if social distancing measures are in place. And a stay-at-home order in Tennessee will lapse by the end of April. There's been pressure to lift the lockdowns. Protesters taking to the streets across America, calling for businesses to reopen. These are the most recent rallies that took place on Tuesday. Some of the protesters have come bearing firearms gun rights groups also among the organizers. Well, the state of Illinois has seen one of the worst outbreaks of COVID-19. According to the latest figures, there have been more than 23,000 cases and 1,000 deaths. 
Dr Emily Landon is an infectious disease expert and had this message for anti-lockdown protesters. It's clear to me that we're admitting at least as many patients as we're discharging with COVID every single day. We're not ready to get back outside and do our regular lives. Not in the same way we used to anyway. This is unbelievable to me. They are putting themselves and many others in harm's way. The real problem with this illness is not, it, certainly we care a lot about those that are sick and we're very worried about them overburdening our health system, but it's the people who are transmitting the disease before they even have symptoms and those that never develop symptoms but can still transmit the infection. And that is exactly where we see spread like that in these sorts of protest and crowded situations. Those people are probably starting yep. complicated transmission webs. Dr. Landon there. Now, to get a perspective on those protests, I spoke to Cathy Kay in Washington. I think we should put the numbers of, of protesters in some perspective, though, Kasia, because it seems that they're in their hundreds. They're not in their thousands. They're not in their tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. These are relatively small groups in several states around the country. Um, in some cases, they seem to have been backed by fairly conservative groups who are urging them to get out there and protest. And to some extent, look, you can understand it. 22 million Americans have lost their jobs. People are very anxious about the state of the economy. This is people's livelihoods at stake. They're not getting a paycheck. They can't make their rent. They can't pay their bills and they want to go back to work. So it, it is an understandable instinct that people really want this lockdown to be over. But when you dig into the opinion polls in those states where we are seeing some of the lockdowns being released, actually people are nervous about this lockdown being ended too soon. Overwhelmingly, the polls suggest that in states like Georgia and Florida, people are saying, actually, we won't be going back to these businesses if we're not convinced that those shops, those tattoo parlors, those gyms are safe. And they're getting some mixed messages from the White House as well, because we've had the president, as you say, uh, on Twitter talking about liberate Virginia, liberate Minnesota, liberate Michigan, kind of seeming to urge the protesters on. He was asked about this in the press conference uh, last night and he said, look, there are those protests seem to be fine. They're um, abiding by social distancing rules. I, from the from the images I have seen, that is certainly not always the case. And then you also have his top health officials. Uh, Dr. Burks was asked about these protests last night and, and, she, and she also pushing back against you have to do things in social distancing manner. She was also asked about reopening the country and said, well, you can open tattoo parlors and massage parlors, but you have to be able to social distance if you're creative and can find a way to do that. OK, so there's definitely mixed messages coming out of the White House on the opening up and towards the protesters themselves. It seems that an awful lot in America has changed. One thing that hasn't is how political the coronavirus has become. It's a bit like climate change. It's become an intensely political issue. As, as it is in so many countries. Cathy, thank you especially for putting us uh, into perspective the number of protesters. Also, another very interesting line coming out. If anybody thought that this, uh, this coronavirus would be over any time soon, there's a stark warning from a top health official saying, warning about a second uh, uh, possible uh, resurgence of this virus. Yeah, I mean, look, this is what immunologists and virologists have been saying throughout this, uh, that there will likely be a second wave of the coronavirus come the autumn. Back in the 1918 flu pandemic, it was actually that second wave from 1918 into 1919 that killed the most number of people. And so that's what scientists are concerned about. What the head of the Centers for Disease Control was particularly pointing out is that if we do get a second wave, in the autumn and going into the winter, it will coincide with the regular flu season. And that's why he's saying that he feels it could be even more dangerous the second time around, the second wave, because of the, the conflux of things. We're coming out of the flu season now, so hospitals are not having to treat people with COVID-19 as well as people with the regular flu. Once we head into the autumn and into the winter, uh, there's going to be another season of flu, and so hospitals are going to have to co cope with both. So I should say the president on Twitter pushing back again that reporting saying that the head of the CDC was misquoted and will be putting out a statement to clarify his comments.